Why don't you ever play hide and seek with the Jamaican and cockpit country? Because good luck if you're it. You'll never find anyone in those dense forests and sinkholes. Yes, we're starting off our day with a little humor here, but we're really about to dive into something quite interesting. We're looking at cockpit country in Jamaica, an area rich in history, unique in geography, and home to some quite fascinating communities. But jokes aside, cockpit country isn't just a great place for a game of hide and seek. It's a place with a rich and fascinating history. It's an area in St. Anne, St. James, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Trelawney, and the northern tip of Clarendon parishes in Jamaica. Cockpit country isn't just another terrain, it's a historical treasure. A treasure indeed with a rich story that takes us back to the dark days of slavery. This unique region of Jamaica served as a sanctuary, a beacon of hope for Maroons, the brave souls who escaped the chains of slavery and sought freedom. Imagine this, you're a Maroon, fleeing from a life of bondage. Ahead you see an expanse of land unlike any other. It's a wild labyrinth of steep-sided hollows, conical hills, and dense vegetation. This is cockpit country, a natural fortress so formidable that it would challenge even the most skilled of navigators. Its geographical complexity was a blessing for the Maroons. The rugged terrain and the dense forest provided excellent natural defenses, making it nearly impossible for their pursuers to infiltrate. The Maroons, however, mastered the art of navigation in this unique terrain, turning it into their stronghold, their refuge. But the significance of cockpit country extends beyond its role as a refuge. This land is a testament to the Maroons' resilience and their indomitable spirit. Here they forged a new life, a life of freedom, despite the harsh conditions and the constant threat of being recaptured. Cockpit country was, and still is, a symbol of resistance and survival. It stands as a historical monument, silently narrating the tales of those who refused to be shackled, who chose freedom over oppression, and who transformed this challenging terrain into a fortress of freedom. As we delve deeper into the story of cockpit country, we'll uncover more about its unique geography, its role in the Maroon Wars, and the vibrant Maroon communities that still inhabit this land. But for now, let's take a moment to appreciate cockpit country for what it truly is, a natural fortress that safeguarded the seeds of freedom. So, cockpit country was a safe haven, a fortress of freedom, but its significance doesn't stop there. Cockpit country wasn't just a home, but also a battlefield. During the Maroon Wars, this rugged landscape played a pivotal role, becoming a stronghold for the Maroons, escaped slaves who were fighting for their freedom against the British. The unique geography of cockpit country, with its steep-sided hollows and towering conical hills, proved to be a formidable natural fortress. This was not a battlefield chosen, but rather one crafted by the hands of nature herself. Now imagine being a British soldier, you're trudging through unfamiliar and treacherous terrain surrounded by dense vegetation, the stifling heat beating down on you. The terrain is unforgiving and you're always on the edge expecting an ambush at any moment. The Maroons on the other hand had adapted to this environment. They knew every nook and cranny, every hidden path, every perfect spot for a surprise attack. It's no wonder then that the Maroons despite being vastly outnumbered managed to hold their own against the British forces. The landscape of cockpit country acted like a secret weapon, a hidden ally in the Maroons' fight for freedom. The steep hillsides provided excellent vantage points for the Maroons to monitor the movements of the British. The dense vegetation offered ample cover for their guerrilla tactics. The difficult terrain hindered the British troops, slowing their progress and disrupting their strategies. This is not to say that the Maroons' victory was solely due to the terrain, far from it. Their indomitable spirit, their unyielding determination, and their fierce desire for freedom were the driving forces of their resistance. But the geography of cockpit country undoubtedly played a significant role, providing a strategic advantage that the Maroons exploited to the fullest. So, the land that provided refuge also provided a strategic advantage in the fight for freedom. Cockpit country isn't just a historical site, it's a living, breathing community. Nestled in the heart of Jamaica, it's a place where the past meets the present every day. Here, the indigenous Maroon communities continue to thrive, carrying forward a lineage that has withstood the trials of time. These communities are the descendants of the Maroons who escaped slavery and sought refuge in the natural fortress that is cockpit country. They've held on to their unique culture, traditions, and way of life, creating a living tapestry that weaves together the threads of history and modernity. Imagine a community where stories of the past aren't just tales told around a fire, but a living part of everyday life. That's the reality for the Maroons of Cockpit Country. 
Their oral traditions passed down through generations are a vibrant testament to their resilience and strength. They continue to speak the Maroon Creole, a language that is a linguistic blend of African and English influences, a poignant reminder of their ancestral roots. Their way of life is deeply intertwined with the land they inhabit. They cultivate the fertile soil of cockpit country, growing crops like yams, bananas, and various medicinal herbs. Hunting and fishing are also essential aspects of their lifestyle, echoing the survival skills of their ancestors. But it's not just about survival. The Maroons have a rich cultural life filled with music, dance, and art, all deeply rooted in their African heritage. Traditional Maroon music with its distinctive drumming and chanting is a powerful expression of their spirit. Their dances like the Cromanti dance are filled with symbolic movements that tell stories of their past. Yet amidst all these age-old traditions, the Maroons are not stuck in the past. They are an active part of today's Jamaica, contributing to the country's social, economic, and cultural landscape. They are educators, artisans, farmers, and much more, their contributions reaching far beyond the boundaries of cockpit country. Cockpit country is not just a relic of the past, it's a vibrant part of the present. So, let's raise a glass to the Maroons of Cockpit Country, a community that embodies the spirit of resilience, the joy of culture, and the strength of heritage. Cockpit Country isn't just a community, it's an ecosystem, a vibrant tapestry of life woven together by the threads of countless species, each playing their unique role. This place is a sanctuary for an array of creatures some of which are so rare, they are teetering on the brink of extinction. Take for instance the Eleutherodactylus sisyphidemus, a species of frog that's not just critically endangered, but can only be found in this very region. This diminutive amphibian might not seem significant at first glance but, it plays an important role in the local food chain, and its presence is an indicator of the health of the environment. Just as important is the black-billed Amazon parrot, a species with striking green plumage and a black beak, native to the lush forests of cockpit country. These birds are not only a spectacle to behold, but they also play a crucial role in seed dispersal, helping to maintain the diversity of the flora in this region. But it's not just these unique inhabitants that make cockpit country significant. The region itself, with its unique geography of steep-sided hollows and conical hills, is a haven of biodiversity. The dense vegetation provides shelter and food for a multitude of species, from insects and birds to mammals and reptiles. And let's not forget the role of cockpit country in mitigating climate change. The dense forests act as a carbon sink, absorbing and storing carbon dioxide, a major greenhouse gas. This makes the region not just important for Jamaica, but for the whole planet. The ecological importance of cockpit country extends far beyond its borders. It's a microcosm of our planet's biodiversity, a living testament to the richness of life on Earth. It serves as a reminder of the intricate connections that bind us all together, and the responsibility we have to protect these precious ecosystems. So cockpit country is not just a home for people, but also a vital habitat for diverse species. It's a reminder that we share this world with countless other creatures, and that our survival is intertwined with theirs. So let's cherish and protect these natural wonders, not just for us, but for all the life that calls cockpit country home. Cockpit country isn't just an ecosystem, it's a protected reserve. Indeed, this unique expanse of land is more than just a geographical marvel, it's a refuge for a plethora of species, some of which are critically endangered. But preserving such a diverse and delicate ecosystem is no small feat. It takes the concerted efforts of local communities, government bodies, and international organizations. One of the first significant steps towards protecting this area was the establishment of the Cockpit Country Forest Reserve in the mid-20th century. Spanning over 200 square kilometers, this reserve was created to safeguard the unique geography and rich biodiversity of the region. From the steep-sided hollows to the conical hills, from the black-billed Amazon parrot to the critically endangered frog Eleutherodactylus sisyphidemus, the reserve is a sanctuary for all. But the conservation efforts don't stop there. In recent years there has been a growing chorus of voices calling for cockpit country to be recognized as a national park. This would provide an additional layer of protection, ensuring that the area's natural beauty and biodiversity are preserved for generations to come. Moreover, there's also a push for cockpit country to be designated as a World Heritage Site. This prestigious title bestowed by UNESCO would not only draw much-needed attention to the region's ecological significance but also bring in additional resources for its conservation. 
These efforts, while significant, are not without challenges. The task of preserving this vast and varied landscape is a complex one, requiring constant vigilance and adaptive management strategies, but it's a task that many are committed to, driven by the belief that cockpit country is worth preserving. So, cockpit country isn't just being preserved for its past, but also for its future. Because at the end of the day, safeguarding this remarkable place is about more than just protecting its history and its biodiversity. It's about ensuring that future generations have the chance to marvel at its beauty, learn from its rich heritage, and draw inspiration from its resilience. Cockpit country isn't just a protected reserve, it's a living testament to Jamaica's history and biodiversity. Fast forward to today, the cockpit country continues to serve as a beacon of natural and cultural richness. It remains a haven for the indigenous Maroon communities who, like their ancestors, still thrive in these hills, preserving their unique cultural heritage and way of life. The cockpit country forest reserve, established in the mid-20th century, continues to safeguard a significant chunk of this region, spanning over 220 square kilometers. This conservation effort is an essential stride in preserving the area's unique geography and the diverse species it hosts. However, the preservation of cockpit country is not without its challenges. The region's rich bauxite deposits have sparked interests, leading to ongoing debates about mining activities. These activities pose a significant threat to the ecosystem and the communities living here. Thus, the struggle is real, but so is the resilience. Conservation organizations both local and international along with the Jamaican government are working tirelessly to maintain the ecological balance. They are fighting to keep the mining activities at bay, advocating for sustainable practices, and educating the public about the importance of preserving this historical and ecological treasure. The proposal to designate Cockpit Country as a national park and a World Heritage Site is still on the table. If this comes to fruition, it will not only bolster the conservation efforts but also give cockpit country the global recognition it truly deserves. Remember, every tree, every hill, every creature in cockpit country tells a story. A story of resilience, of survival, of freedom. And it's our responsibility to ensure these stories continue to be told, to make sure this vibrant testament to Jamaica's history and biodiversity remains for future generations to explore, learn, and cherish. So, cockpit country is not just a part of Jamaica. It's a part of our world's heritage. As we come to the end of this journey, let's revisit what we've learned about cockpit country. This remarkable region in Jamaica is not just a geographic location, but a place steeped in history, culture, and biodiversity. Firstly, we delved into the history of cockpit country, a place that served as a sanctuary for the Maroons escaping slavery. Its unique geography, with steep-sided hollows and conical hills, provided natural defenses and allowed the Maroons to successfully resist British attempts at recapture. These events played out dramatically during the Maroon Wars, where the landscape of cockpit country was a significant factor in the Maroons' resistance. We also discovered the indigenous Maroon communities that continue to call cockpit country home. These communities are living testaments to the resilience and determination of their ancestors, preserving their unique culture and traditions amidst the rugged and unforgiving terrain. Ecologically, cockpit country is a treasure trove of biodiversity, hosting a variety of species some of which are critically endangered. From the Eleutherodactylus sisyphotamus frog to the black-billed Amazon parrot, this region is a vibrant tapestry of life that continues to amaze and inspire. The conservation efforts surrounding cockpit country were also highlighted. From the establishment of the Cockpit Country Forest Reserve in the 50s, to ongoing proposals for National Park and World Heritage Site designation, the importance of preserving this unique area for future generations is clear. Lastly, we discussed the current status of Cockpit Country, an area that continues to face challenges but remains a beacon of cultural and ecological significance. And remember, Cockpit Country isn't just a place on a map. It's a testament to resilience, freedom, and the incredible diversity of life. So the next time you think about playing hide-and-seek, maybe give cockpit country a miss. Not just for your sake, but for the sake of preserving this incredible place for future generations. Thank you for visiting the channel. Please like and subscribe for more interesting videos.